Leipzig. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how we. Uh, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> There's just a huge field of grace that, because we're built like bumper cars, we just run into shit. Yeah, it's amazing. If we don't run into shit, we make shit to run into. <laughs> it's just crazy. Really. Isn't it enough? Just to we it. don't see the pole that's going up this pond and we think we're driving it, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it's a stubborn idea. I would say way above the other stubborn idea they talk about, which is confronted with your unmanageability you just uh believe if you only if your head believes if it only managed better everything would work yeah that's a stubborn but there's a lot more stubborn ones which is you're the driver no matter how many times it's obvious you as many others have been driven the head just keeps see this is the point you're not the head so the head stubbornness about its ideas doesn't have to be yours. Yeah. This is the thing. Because we're aligned with something, our move is based on it moving. If it's, if your life is based on it moving, you're going to move very, very slowly, like a little tortoise, and you'll probably just go around in a circle. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But is that is what a big wheel is, Paul? <laughs> Yeah, and this is why we admit this isn't about chanting hallelujah. First, there's admittance of being defeated. Yeah, that's essential here because if you don't admit that, you're going to take the hallelujah as the defeated. Yeah, it's just the way. If you're in the act of doing something without knowing it, which is the act of being identified as self, Without knowing it, we're not conscious of it, most of us, yeah? We become conscious of it after the effects. So therefore, after the effects, as part of after the effects, the only way out is to get out of self, which is what it loves you to be involved with, because that's more the engagement of being in self than anything else, yeah? Like quicksand. Like people, you know, even this program, self becomes a huge topic that's talked about quite a lot. And in one level, you could see it as a as a uh, propagating of the obsession with self. This is what confronts certain people when, when they go to meetings. They feel the repetition of this is not helping. Yeah. Because it's self is in something and self's now going to try to get out of something. This is seeing you're not that idea of self that says it's in and you're not that idea of self that wants to get out. Yeah, it's a different kind of out. It's not preceded by an in. Yeah. It tells you you were never in this idea. Yeah, you believed you were, you acted like you were. You lived as if that was true, but it wasn't true. It was seemingly true. It was appearing to us that it was true. And that's what that's the only thing it needs to appear to be true is to us. Yeah. Once we're aligned with it, the parasite has neutralized our separateness from it. And now you live as the parasite. Yeah rationalizing, excusing, blaming. Yeah. But the real obstacle isn't the obstacle that you can see. It's this it's the seer of all the obstacles. That's the big obstacle. Yeah. So this is about losing interest in it. The program of recovery is based on losing interest in self. It's like if St. Francis ever spun a program, it would be like Fucking the 12 steps. Yeah. It would. He said it's it, it's by self-forgetting that you're reborn. What? Yeah. So it doesn't say you're reborn and then you're going to forget self. It's in self-forgetting that you're reborn. You have to get the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart. 
Yeah. The horse before the cart. Yeah. yeah. It's in self-forgetting that you're reborn. Everyone wants to reborn constantly remembering self. Have you ever seen people in spiritual journeys? They have the longest blogs about how they're forgetting self. Yeah. They write books about it. But no, it's, it's the reborn is an after effect of forgetting self. Self is not reborning. Self has never been born. It's an idea, yeah? You weren't occupied by it when you were a baby. You don't remember shit, do you? The brain develops, the brain interprets to the body. Now you're seen as a long-lasting, independent, separate entity that has a lot of power, which it does, but it can't wield it. So that's the dilemma of powerlessness, yeah? Yeah, you can make mountains out of molehills, but you can't seem to make people do what you want. It's insane. Eh? So you're constantly frustrated, or the head is, because its premise has lots of holes. And it has to paper over it, blame, you know what I mean? You'll invest, you'll investigate every, like Dracula will go on vampire hunts. It's more than happy to hunt other vampires. It is. So you can't imagine what loss of interest would look like because you're looking at it as with a lot of interest. Yeah. Loss of interest is you're walking around, you're not checking in every 30 seconds to see what condition my condition is in. You don't. Yeah. You, you don't. You're, you're experiencing shit. Yeah, you're you're experiencing stuff. No. Every five minutes checking in. How do I feel? I don't fucking know. I have no idea. The head is the worst interpreter of feelings that I've run into. Dogs are much better. Cats are much better. I would probably amoebas are probably better. Yeah. Giving name to shit doesn't give it a definition. It gives it a definition, but that definition is not of the feeling. It's of the head. The head defines what a feeling is, and it mixes up excitement with anxiety and anxiety with excitement. Yeah. It has us believing our biggest problem is fear. No, it isn't. It's mental anxiety. If fear was our biggest problem, we would be in the Neanderthal time. We would be on a survival level, like we were going to be eaten every 10 minutes. Yeah, that's fear. Yeah, we're not in fear. We're in mental anxiety. Many of us are sitting in a nice soft sofa. We have clothing. We didn't crawl to the chair. We have shoes, probably. Yeah, you probably have a drink right next to you, hopefully not alcoholic maybe alcoholic, you probably have a sandwich or some Cheetos to chew on. You're fucking well taken care of in the moment, but you're like in abject fear. Have we? Are we in the survival mode or the living mode? I think most of us are in the survival mode while living. Yeah. We didn't even get the message. Yeah. Like, you know, if a shark knocked on your door, would you be afraid? Not if you had knowledge of sharks. Unless you live in an underwater house, you're not going to be fucking afraid of a land shark. Sharks haven't adapted to land. Yeah. So they could make a big sound and everything. You wouldn't, it wouldn't evoke any fear because you know there's no land shark. The head is just unbelievable. Eh? It's, it's incredible. How many you had enough? I mean, literally. Do you think it's really going to change its tune? It can't. It only learned a few notes. 
It can't really. It has the Inagata Davida bass line, and it loves to do long fucking solos, mostly drum solos. That sort of suck, you know. <laughs> Everything is a variation of Inagata Davida. Do 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 do. That's it. I'm not going to get what I want. Do, 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 do. I'm afraid of losing what I have. Do, 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 do. Yes, and then it has a little dramatic do, do, do. But it's dun, 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 dun. Yeah, on and on. Have you ever heard that song, the long version? You could probably be put to sleep. It would be a great hypnotist move. After six minutes of that, yeah. This is in a got a me, you know, in a got a me. I got to get a you. <laughs> You've been fucking with me. So fuck you. Da, da, da. It's crazy. Yeah. Have we been given the opportunity in recovery to live a life that could be, that could have the basis of satisfaction and contentment? Yes. Have we been relieved of a terrible condition? Yes. Has many of us reached a, a state where the problem doesn't exist for us today? Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. We have all the time in the world to look at what we're not. Just to check it out. Yeah. Because you know... You know that greatest robbery in the older days, which was when the first computers came, that somebody stole like a quarter of a cent on every bank transaction? And, you know, of course, it looks like it's super nothing, but billions and billions of a quarter of a cent turned into a lot of money. Yeah. Every day, all day, tithing to this fucking thing that's playing God. Yeah. Yeah the true value of living for a secure interpretation. That's not too secure, eh? It's secure that you're fucking out to lunch and you think you know everything, but it's not secure. It's on, it's on like shifting sand all day. Yeah. Always afraid to be revealed and having tons of defenses to keep that from happening. So you and I have to be out to lunch, really, for it to have, for it to be enjoying our lunch, we have to be out to lunch. Yeah. So I mean, we're perfect examples because it went an extreme way. Yeah. Drug addiction. Uh I don't see like, yeah, food addiction is incredible because you got to eat food, but Food addiction wouldn't end you up at certain places where drug addiction ends you up. Yeah, I mean, it maybe it could, but it seems like the most flamboyant addiction has been drug and alcohol. Yeah, it can really fucking uh, do a number. The other ones are more quiet, so to speak. But they all contain the first and only element, which is you. Yeah. You are the one that gets into the addiction. You are the one that hopes to get out of the addiction. But the real addiction is to that you. The you that's like the, the thing that never moves. It goes in and out, goes in and out, goes in and out. And it blames the in and outs for its disabilities, let's say. But in fact, it's a failed system before it does anything, yeah? It's based on something that's not true and it can't get out of that. It just keeps repeating, yeah? Yeah, so, yep, I think we started already. So. It's not an AA meeting, but if you have ever felt the AA spirit, I feel we have a lot of it here, yeah? But it's not an AA meeting. We're here to be available to each other. 
and to be a vessel of that loving presence that is expressing itself through our group conscience, which at this moment is the Tuesday morning Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Emphasizing a point that I feel if it isn't emphasized, it will play a role in emphasizing all the other points just to disguise itself. Yeah. I humbly believe that. I humbly believe why people have a difficult time doing the fourth step inventory is that something in them doesn't want to do it. And that something in them is foreign to them. Yeah. And there's the resistance. I don't believe it's your resistance. I believe there's resistance. Yeah. I believe when it's your resistance, you've given it a lot of oomph. I do. Just like a resentment. You know, you get pissed on the on the highway. You may speed up to tailgate the person like they tailgated you. Then s sensibility comes in. You slow up. And it's forgotten after, you know, one exit. Yeah. My resentment can live for 60 years. That's incredible, isn't it? How is that resentment getting life? It must be getting life from us. It can't stand. It's like a flare. It can't keep flaring. Yeah. It has a little whack. It lights up the situation. I'm right. They're wrong, whatever. And then it dissipates quickly. But if it hooks up with us and we call it ours, it can last forever. Some people have a resentment at that dying moment. Yeah. Their head goes over that resentment they've been going over for 50, 60 years at the last fucking moment. Wouldn't you like to say goodbye to something else? Or hello to something else, literally. Really, do you want to be drawn back to that? Oh, we've been given a life to a lot of stuff, haven't we? We just give life. We breathe life into so much shit. Relationships get ruined. Tons of stuff. Yeah. And you get to be alone and right. Yeah. Yeah. I had a girlfriend, my first girlfriend in AA. It was a relationship made in heaven. She had three months, I had six months. Good luck. Her solution was to nap a lot. That was pretty good. But we both had the inability to have a viable relationship with another. So she slept a lot, and I don't know what I did. It came to a it just dissipated as it, as it was going to. And she was sober and we, I was both sober and she got to be sober for 20 years. And then she went out. Yeah. I stayed sober. And, uh, she had written a book on codependency. She had helped a lot of people. She was a powerhouse really, but she started to drink without telling anyone still secretary meetings, and everything. Then it went off the fucking rails and for seven years, she had amassed a pretty healthy uh, income. So for seven years, she went in and out, visited the most expensive rehabs around in Arizona and everywhere, got sober friends to live with her, you know, all these things, nothing worked. In and out for seven years. Seven years. Finally, she overdosed on pills, and drank, you know, pretty much killed herself. I went to the memorial and I saw a lot of people I hadn't seen in a while. And I used to know her sisters and I had met her parents and they were still all alive. And you know what? Every one of them was happy that it was over. Yeah, they were happy to lose their sister and daughter, truly, because it was over. It was worse what they were having than if that person would die. That's insane. Eh? That's insane. Literally. So, uh, that's not an unusual occurrence. 
when people go out after years, let's say 20 years, I've I've noted when I've heard them share, one first thing is they're super surprised the urge is back. They're, they're sitting at a meeting and they want to drink and they will, they're totally flabbergasted that that's their new condition. Yeah. Every one of them got like bushwhacked, so to speak. They had no idea what they had been missing until it showed up again. Wow. And when it shows up, it's difficult to fucking evict, as we all know. Yeah. But I would they would stay would be talking. I can't believe it. I want a drink at this noon meeting. Yes, there you go. It's insane. So enjoy the abstinence of that fucking beast. Yeah. It's like a big dog. Don't tease it. If you don't tease it, you got the run of the house. If you tease it and it wakes up, it's going to run you. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are enjoying the absence of a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Fantastic. I am so stoked just based on that. Yeah. Wouldn't I want to share that? Yeah, I would. Wouldn't I see, in a sense, everyone I meet is a seeming Wendy? Yeah, and I don't want to see that happen. I don't, if it doesn't have to, you know. I've got wisdom that I'm not going to keep someone from their bottom because it could be a disservice. That's came over the years. But basically, if there's a little glint of Wendy through the alcoholism, I'm willing to hang out. If it's just alcoholism, I'm fucking tired of that shit. I don't want to hear life story after life story. Yeah. And then they're drunk an hour later. Yeah. But if there's a little bit of willingness, man, we're willing to go a long way. Yeah. So here we are. I truly believe there is the exact nature of the wrong. I believe it's foreign to us to get clear about that. I believe what a lot of what you did while you were under the influence, you had no uh, say about any of it. You were driven, you were used for transportation. Uh, and to be clear about that, if you're clear that something right now is doing for you what you can't do for yourself, that means you can be clear that in the past something did through you what you wouldn't do by yourself. I do not see how you can be blind to one and see the other. Yeah, I think you can see both. You can see that which is playing God. And how I feel you quit playing God is you lose interest in that which is playing God. The head is not going to quit playing God. That's what it does. Yeah. But you can quit the heads playing God. What it will look like, you'll lose interest in it. What will you look like? You don't follow its suggestions much. Yeah. When it says left, you go straight. After a while, it loses one of its main uh, positions, which is GPS. Yeah. Now it just becomes like how would Cosell, you know, interpreting a football game. It's boring. It's he has a prejudice. You've heard it before, but it's not so unbearable. But now the GPS has been removed. That honor, it doesn't have anymore. It is not directing your life anymore. Hallelujah. Yeah. Check out the results. Yeah. So it's been dethroned as the great forecaster, the, get, the great, uh, you know, explorer guide it's been it's lost that aspect of its job and now it's just bitching like a fucking radio jock on some radio station yeah just bitching about grievances and gripes and fucking vendettas and i feel you may find a lot of humor in it yeah did you ever see stephen colbert he used to do a thing about a crazy guy called rock bunyan or something and he was he was like a crazy radio jockey and it was such a parody it was great yeah well this is what it can be like with you 
Yeah. You'll hear it playing God, but it's not making nothing. There's no decisions that are made based on it. Yeah. Yeah. So now it plays God with like Tonka toys instead of your fucking car in your life. Yeah. I'm telling you once again, you're never going to get what you want. <laughs> you're never going to be happy. You might as well kill yourself, but drink first. I like the longer, slower way. Drink. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We're here every weekend. We're not going to be here next week, though. Mark in your calendar. Tuesday, both meetings are going to... I'm not going to be here. We'll be back east, so... <clears throat> doing live things. So, next Tuesday... Both meetings and next Thursday, the recovery meeting are not going to happen. We'll put it up, but they're having trouble putting stuff up on the site. So I'm telling you now. All right. So let's open it up. <clears throat> if you have any reading or you want to entertain any topic. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you want do you want to go for a reading, Paul? Uh, yeah, sure. Whatever you guys want to do. I just. uh it, had, it always has to come out, so it came out. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> I enjoyed the ride. <laughs> great, great, yeah. Okay, here we go with uh, the reading. Um, <clears throat> and it's kind of a medium reading uh, and for my <laughs> presentation. Yeah. Uh, page 62, good old page 62, which is a beautiful intro to our message on page uh, 64. We'll begin with selfishness, self-centeredness, that we think is the root of our troubles, driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity, we step on the toes of our fellows and they retaliate. Sometimes they hurt us seemingly without provocation, but we invariably find that at some time in the past, we have made decisions based on self, which later placed us in a position to be hurt. Honey, can you just stop one second? Sure. Just there, they define, knowing it or not, the difference between us and self in that sentence. Exactly. We, we, we have made decisions based on self. Those are two different things, yes? We made decisions based on self instead of based on us, yeah? Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, it, this is all perfect and it and it just proves what our premise is uh of of the causes and conditions the exact nature of the role. but going yeah. on so our troubles are based of our own no ourselves making they arise out of ourselves and the alcoholic is an extreme example of self-will run riot, though he usually doesn't think so. Hmm. Above everything, we alcoholics must be rid of this selfishness. We must or it kills us. God makes that possible. And there often seems no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid. Many of us had moral and philosophical convictions galore, but we could not live up to them even though we would have liked to. Neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on our own power. We had to have God's help. 
This is the how and why of it. First of all, we had to quit, self had to quit playing God. It didn't work. Next, we decided that hereafter in this drama of life, God was going to be our director. He is the principal. We are his agents. He is the father and we are his children. Most good ideas are simple. And this concept was the keystone of a new and triumphant art through which we passed into freedom. When we sincerely took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things followed. We had a new employer. Being all powerful, he provided what we needed. If we kept close to him and performed his work well, established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves, our little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. As we felt new power flow in, as we enjoyed peace of mind, as we discovered we could face life successfully, as we became conscious of his presence, we began to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. We were reborn. That's it. Well, that's more than enough. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let me just. Obviously, the clue is looking at us right in the face. First paragraph on page sixty-two that our matriarch uh, shared is selfishness. There's self in that. Self-centeredness, there's self in that, is is we think is the root of our troubles. So self right there is seen twice as part of the root of the troubles. Driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity. What would fear be? I would to me would be mental anxiety. So mental anxiety, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity. So now we've heard the word self, I think, six times. We step on the toes of our fellows and they retaliate. This was amazing when I read this because I lived it in recovery. I saw my role in things that I wasn't seeing before. After a few months of getting sober, it was awesome. Man. my everything started from me. And then when I saw the start of me and its role in things, it was amazing. That's what really triggered uh, the relief that the fourth step can bring about was seeing my role in things. And then seeing my role in things, over time I saw my role in things was mostly self's role in things. But it, sometimes it hurt, hurt us seemingly without provocation, but we invariably find that at some time in the past we have made decisions based on self, which later placed us in position to be hurt. Now, to do that, invariably fine, we do an inventory, obviously. That's how we do it in AA. Yeah? So by doing the inventory, you're going to invariably find that at some point in the past, we have made decisions based on self, which later place us in position to be hurt. That's when you're looking at the inventory as to see how self has defeated you. That's It's following that same theme that's presented in page 64. So our troubles, this is where I don't agree with it. So our troubles, we think, are basically of our own making. I do not believe that. I believe it's the making of the head. Yeah, they are not ours. This is what enslaves you and, and uh, chains you to the past, is the belief that you are, the, you are basically, all your troubles were made by you. That, to me, is the bondage of the past. I do not believe that. I believe you and I have been driven. We made decisions based on self. 
and all these things that they explain. See, but but the stubbornness of this idea shows in the book, even though em they emphatically point the correct finger at the actual target, they backtrack without knowing it the next paragraph or two, and they sing the story that you're it, yeah? You're the root of all the trouble. You manufacture your own misery. I don't believe that. I don't. So, so our troubles, we think, yes. When you think about troubles, <laughs> are basically of our own making. They arise out of ourselves. Yeah, they may arise, they arise out of ourselves, but we're not ourselves, yeah? They do arise out of self, but when they're not ourselves, yeah? If they are, we're sure sharing a, a lot of ourselves with a lot of other people. Because <laughs> we're doing the same shit all these other people are doing under the influence of this problem, yeah? Whatever. All right, so our troubles, we think we basically have our own making. They arise out of ourselves, and the alcoholics, an extreme example of self-will run riot. Yes, though he usually doesn't think so. Don't you think that's interesting? That the person that's been, is the one that's been driven doesn't believe they've been driven. Yet everyone else, at least if they're sober from alcoholism and have a clear understanding, they know alcoholism is who they're talking to at that moment, not Steve or Mary or Jim. Alcoholism is taken over, yeah? Self, in, in its expression in alcoholism, has taken over. So I just love when these, though he usually doesn't think so. They use the same thing with the self-centered person. They don't think so. Why? See, because the thing that's in, that's jacked into your thinking is using the thinking to hide itself. So you're the last one to know that you're fucked. Isn't that insane? Really? And then when you hear it, you don't want to hear it from usually the first people, which is family. Because you have, you have weird vibrational relationships to family, but the family is saying you're fucked and you're arguing with them. But you are. Yeah, that's why you usually have to hear it from someone else. Someone who doesn't seem to love you usually is the one who carries the message, yeah? Yeah, because we kill the message by the messenger at, a lot of times. We don't want to be told by these people we know, yeah? So above everything here, above everything, that's pretty important, eh? If they're talking about a lot of things and then they state in this book of talking about a lot of things above everything, uh, we should listen. Eh? So here it goes. Above everything, we alcoholics must be rid of this selfishness. How are you going to do that as a self? Your wanting to get rid of it will turn into a slavery or a bondage of self. Yes? That sincere desire to be rid of something will be co-opted and it will fuel the slavery to that something. By wanting constantly to get out of it, you're reinforcing the idea that you're in it. You can't, this is how mental states work. Yes? Mental states work is the drive to get out of something is giving a reality to that which you're in. Yeah. And it proves its reality by our wanting to get out of it. But we're actually giving something that's not real a reality by trying to escape it. This is not a very rare phenomenon. It's a mental aberration. Yeah. It's part of the dualistic way it sees things. So when we're trying to get out of something, we're given the reality of the in that we're trying to get out of. Wow. So above everything, we alcoholics must be rid of this selfishness. We must or it kills us. 
Yeah. What kills you? The parasite. It just says it right here. It kills us. It doesn't say us kills us. It kills us. It is self. Yeah. Above everything, we alcoholics must be rid of this selfishness. We must or it kills us. So the parasite will kill the host. And in some cases, that's the best wish at that moment. Most of it, it just keeps dragging on. Yeah. The defeat spans a lot of time and you go to worse and worse fucking bottoms. Sometimes it would be a great mercy if it just killed me, yeah? But it's very clear in this sentence, you're not it. Above everything, we alcoholics must be rid of this selfishness. We are not the source of the selfishness, because if we were, how would we be able to get rid of it? Yeah? But we can get rid of it. And... We must or it kills us. It doesn't mean us. It means self, yes? If this doesn't, if this is not seen through, it's going to kill us. Wow. We must or it kills us. God makes that possible. Self does not make it possible. That which is playing God does not make it possible. The God, or whatever you want to call it, makes it possible. That which is playing God is part of the killing of us. It's not going to be the salvation of us. If you think you're going to rehab it, I don't think you have enough time and effort to do that. Yeah? I haven't seen many people ha make a snake act like a fucking dog. I don't. I'm sure they've tried. But the, the nature of the snake is probably going to win out. It's a snake, yeah? Other things can be domesticated and changed. I don't think you can do that with this, yeah? I, have to, I believe you have to see it as other. Yeah. And there often seems no way, seems no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid. Yeah. Many of us had moral and philosophical convictions galore, but we could not live up to them, even though we would have liked to. That calls, that sounds like the dilemma of powerlessness. Yeah. What's cutting us off from the power is now getting the power. Yeah. The self cuts us off from the power and now usurps the power and plays God with it. Wow. I didn't know this was going on. Yeah, exactly. We Neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on our own power. This emphatically admits this is not a self-help program. We're not trying to help self help itself. We're admitting something. Yes? Neither could, all right, we have to have God's help. This is the how and why of it, first of all. So here we have above everything else, and first of all, we haven't even gotten to a step yet. Yeah. So before we get to the step above everything else and first. Yeah. Above everything else. Uh, we must be rid of the selfishness. And first, we have to quit playing God. Wow. It sounds different, but they're about the same thing. Yes. How to sort of get rid of the selfishness is to lose interest in that which is playing God. Yeah. Above everything, first things first. Yes. Why? It doesn't work. The playing God doesn't work. Now, most of us, when we read that at first or heard it, we thought we were playing God. 
Yes? And now we had a new order. Quit playing God. And we set out to try to do that. And some of us realized that that which is playing God cannot quit playing God. That would be playing God. Yeah. Wow. Now, it sounded like a bummer from the self's point of view, but it turned into a hallelujah because you were open now to see you're not that which is playing God. <clears throat> and not playing God doesn't look like it does to what's playing God. It looks like losing interest in that which is playing God. It's not that that which is playing God getting very interested in lo stop playing God. It's losing interest in that which is playing God. That's quitting playing God. What? I didn't understand. I don't understand that. Well, find out. I bet you that's how you're going to feel. Yep. The playing God will continue, but you won't be going along with it. Yeah. If you're dreaming that the quit, the playing God stops, I think you're going to be sorely disappointed. The head is going to forecast like it always did, but you're not going to have the volume up. You're not going to be listening to it. You'll hear it because it's playing in your room, but you're not going to listen to it. There you go. Therefore, we've just covered above everything and first of all. So if anyone tells you there's something before this, they're not reading from the book. They're not coming from the book because the book right here on one page says above everything and first of all. Yes? If he, they tell me there's something before that, I don't see it. I thought I'm reading the book right now. Yeah. Above everything, we must be rid of the selfishness, which we cannot do, can we? And first, there's got to be a quit playing God. And then we can luxuriate in the principle of the third step. Yeah. And then let's look at what has defeated us so we can recognize it when it attempts to defeat us again because it will attempt to defeat us again. Yeah? But now we have the eyes to see and the grace to be moved in another direction to the point where the problem will not exist for you today. That's incredible. To me, the problem not existing goes right along with above everything else and first. Yeah? You get clear about this shit, it brings an incredible understanding to the steps. It does. You'll see the steps in a different vision. Yeah? You'll see they're not about getting you better. They're about losing interest in this idea of you. Yeah? And in self-forgetting, we'll be reborn. And I believe a lot of us here have been reborn. Yeah? And I bet if you're reborn, you realize the importance of the self-forgetting. Because that's what, it, that's what caused the rebirth. Yeah? We can arrive there, therefore we can share it now with people who are getting ready to arrive there. This is what we do. Yes? Maybe clear up some misunderstandings. So the proceedings can go on with that without that many bumps and fucking you know, inter you know interruptions. Yeah, get clear about the problem, and then you're going to see the solution very clearly. Yeah, it's relief from the bondage of self. Will there still be self or selfing? Yes, but there'll be you'll be relieved of the bondage of the selfing. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're relieved of self. You're not. You're relieved of the bondage of self. Yep. Self will be presented. That's how the body thinks. It, the brain thinks that you're a body. Yeah. Its thinking can be very good. Its psychological thinking usually isn't. Yeah. When it thinks about you, fucking take, take shelter. When it thinks about how to fix the carburetor on the car, maybe. Pretty good. You can look at a YouTube thing, follow it, and you'll probably fix the carburetor. 
Yeah. If you go in and start thinking about yourself, take shelter. <laughs> That's all. You'll have a siren, you know, like those sirens they used to have and you're supposed to go underground. You'll hear a silent siren when self, the storm of self is trying to build. It's got to suck a lot of shit out of the atmosphere. It does. And you can be aware of it. Yeah. And being aware of it, which is if you're aware of it, that's the conscious presence of the power. Yeah. When you're aware of it, it seems to deteriorate its ability to defeat us. Yeah. I don't know why, but that's how it works. Yeah. It likes to get you without knowing it. You'll be completely selfish and you won't think so. You'll be thinking you'll be doing this shit and you still won't think so. Uh, this message will pierce that fucking manufactured curtain. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't you love just to, as you're losing speed in life and rolling down the hill a little slower, wouldn't you like to have, you know, the ability to enjoy peace of mind? To feel content and satisfied. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you would hope that the end of your, of your life would be less struggle than the rest of your life, not more, you know? But you want to just be chewing on a resentment and going down rabbit holes on the internet or something. Fuck. Get out in the lights, do something, jump in cold water or something. Yeah, really. You're not a denizen of the deep. Don't go down that shit. Is it making you more useful to others? Hmm. Well, all right, thank you. I'm not going to finish the whole thing or we'll be here for a couple of days. <laughs> It can, the message goes on, doesn't it, Paul? Well, if you're awake, if you, I mean, if you're in AA and you read these sentences, every one of them has a huge amount of weight. You could dwell, you could have a year long seminar on this page. You could. There's so much weight in every one of the these statements, so much. And I just try to, Take your attention to the obvious. Look at how many times the word self is used. And look at how many, how little times us is used. Yeah. We're not here to look at us. We're here to look at self. Yeah. Us is what's looking. We don't need to look at that. We need, we need to look at this idea of self. Because for many of us, it's leading us to a fucking drink. Yeah. And for many of us, it, it's going to be the, the end of us, the death of us. Yeah. So. Like when someone leaves a, a group, they don't usually die. You know, a lot of people, when they leave AA, they pass, they die. Yeah. Yeah. That's the sad truth of it. Yeah, this is, you know, it's we can have a lot of fun laughing, but it it's truly a serious matter. I mean, have you ever been in a mountain range of someone else that's been made out of molehills? It's it, it's rough trekking. Yeah, it is. And they're so oh, adamant yeah. believing the mountains are mountains. There's no getting any sense to them. You just have to bring them to a meeting and let them sit in that loving presence. And hopefully something gets triggered, yeah? I don't want to trek through the mountain ranges of other people's molehills. I just don't. That's a good line. I should We should keep that one. I don't want to trek through the mountains of other people's imaginary molehills, whatever. <laughs> but I don't. Do you know what it's like? I love some people. When I call them, I don't hear from them. I I'll call. They call me. I don't hear from them at all. I hear alcoholism. Yeah. And they, you know, I always have to 
you know, I got to eat something or sorry, gotta, I left the water running, something, because it's just got, it's not helpful. And they will just move to another person to call and bitch about. And the elephant is just in the room. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. How many possibilities you have before you drink? How many do you have after you drink? To feel the possibility just shrinks so small that you got to go to a meeting or a rehab or something, yes? Or the hospital. It's insane, isn't it? That's why I'm a real believer. The recovered alcohol calls you before they drink. The alcohol calls you after they drink. It makes It doesn't do, you know? It's like you can cut out all talking. Just throw the life preserver. You know? Just cut out all talking. Just throw the life preserver. Go to a meeting. Drive them to the meeting. I love just to sit in the car silently. Yeah? I don't want to hear the whole story. Because I've heard it before thousands of times. It's the same book with different author pages. I'm now hearing the same story from Steve. And sometimes I've heard it from Steve three or four different times, the whole story. As soon as the author page, the next page, it's all alcoholism. There's no Steve in any, any of it, yeah? The author is meant to, is represented as Steve, but it isn't the author. The rest of the book is driven by something else. Hmm. All right. Kurt, wants Kurt has his hand up, Paul. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Hey, buddy. I just wanted to bring up an, um, an analogy you used to use uh, about the, you know, the the table with the feast. You have this table with all this great food on the table, and you're sitting at the table, but your chair is tor turned towards the back door, and you're waiting on the food to arrive. And you don't know that all you need to do is turn the chair around. Like you use that analogy. I just love that because, you know, I could take that, you know, yeah, I got to get up and go out the back door. I got to wait on the food to get here. You know, you can just like make some phone calls, but the whole time you're sitting at the table and you don't know. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to break. I just well, because that. you're smelling the food, but the head's saying it's coming from behind the door. Yeah. We're you're being right. misled by that which we have trusted and relied upon. We have relied on self, and it's proven to be unreliable. Yeah? yeah. yeah. It's sort of like, you know. How long do you want to commiserate when you've realized that horse you've been riding is dead? You'd probably just step off it. Yeah. It's beside the point of commiserating and going over. You need a live horse. Just, yeah. Has this thing failed you in your life? Has it guided you greatly through relationships? Has it brought you... Uh, a remorseless life or has it just created a lot of calamity and chaos and will never admit its own failings or any of its shortcomings it's always looking to blame excuse and rationalize these are methodologies of a failed system yes yeah thanks for your time Bob yeah, man, it's it's not my time. It's our time. That's what's great. My time at in this in this part of my life is. I hope most of it is our time. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks, man. I think uh, we'll end. Can, and hey, can you can you uh, just take a comment from Mike? Yes. Mike sure. M? Yep. Thanks, Paul. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, Kurt. 
Um, I was just thinking about all the methodologies that I br brought through this book, like turning we statements into I statements and how that reinforced that I was the problem. And I've really explored that lately with especially going through step three with seeing how this condition creates all of this. None of it has anything to do with me and being relieved of that bondage to self has actually happened to me as a result of knowing that I'm not this thing. Because I used to have a hard time writing inventory because I believed that I did all those things, that, all right, I'm responsible for all this. And what an awakening that the way you present this, and I've heard it now be coming for a couple of years, is it's presented so cleanly that it makes doing the steps, not only doing the steps, but carrying the message of this work to others easier to convey when they don't have to beat themselves well they don't have to let self beat them up based on true ownership of all this and that's what i think that's what got me caught up for so long is there was so much i in here um and then the other thing i was thinking about are these these escape rooms a guy invited me hey we're the eight ten of us are going to an escape room like, why, why the fuck? I don't want to go to an escape room. <laughs> and then this little subtle voice was like, you can sit in your living room and do that. You know what I mean? Like, by myself, I could sit and try to escape if I really wanted to. And I just realized that the freedom from the bondage of that is what that means, that there's nothing to escape anymore. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing to escape. There's nothing to run to. There's nothing to run from. And dude, like, I don't know, you're a real blessing, man. Well, not you, but whatever it is that's working through you. But no, seriously, man, this is a beautiful space. And the fact that we get to wake up, and A is a beautiful thing, but it's really about seeing this, man. And, and going through this a couple of times, obviously, you want to be convinced of these ABCs first. That's fucking important. But I just really appreciate the way you present this, you know. And before I came on the, the meeting, I did 10 minutes on this little trampoline that my wife got because she said it's good for the lymphatics. I don't really know what that means. All I know is it's hard to be unhappy on a trampoline. That's <laughs> one thing I know. Try to scowl on a fucking trampoline. It's not going to work. There's like this childlike fun that comes out. So that's my recommendation for the day. Get a small trampoline. Oh, I got to add that with my uh, cold water treatment. All right. Trampoline, actually trampoline and then trampolined into cold water. That would be great. If that doesn't break that rock of slavery, I don't know what will. The rock, the imagined rock of slavery. I do cold showers every day, dude. It's so amazing. Yeah, cold showers are good. Yes, definitely. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you so much, Mike. Always nice to hear from you. Yes. That's how, you know, what's in this voice is relief. That's, that's what is really is meant to be said or implied is relief from bondage of self. Yeah. And then you can attempt to be as clear as you can. But the clarity in itself doesn't mean much. It's it's the relief that it affords or provides is the real value. So. And, well, Paul, isn't that what we're looking for? Uh, relief from the bondage of self when we first pick up? Well, yes, exactly. Of course. Yep. My first solution was drinking. Yes. Yeah, this is how insane it is. The drive for our solution was was driven by the problem. Yeah, this is uh, we've been under an incredible deal without knowing it. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea of waking up, which is the premise of the steps, yeah, is to provide or allow a spiritual awakening, which is sort of like St. Francis's self-forgetting, yeah? So the spiritual awakening 
isn't triggered by spirit. It's tri- it's triggered by self awake uh uh self forgetting. Yes? Do you see that? We're not trying to trigger spirit with spirit. The spirit is already there. What is triggered is is a diminishment of what's obscuring it, which is the mental activity. Yeah. So it's in forgetting the mental activity we're reborn to the spirit. In other words, we are spirit and then we're reborn. Yeah. We are renewed again. We become aware of it again as if we had forgotten it. Yeah. But that coming aware, becoming aware of it again or re being reborn is based on the losing interest in self. It's not based on self gaining interest in spirit. It's based on losing interest in self. Be very clear. It's not based on self gaining interest in spirit. It's losing interest in self. Yeah. You see, these these directions are very sound. Yeah. But what and the direction has just been misdirected. So the misdirection needs to be corrected. Yeah. And then the direction now that we're pointing is sound. It's called good orderly direction or the G-O-D. Yeah. We have been under bad disorderly uh, direction. We not we don't have to come under good orderly direction, just lose interest in the bad yeah, direction, misdirection, and then the established will be established, yes? This isn't like a new, it's a new basis compared to the old basis, but the new basis is like the original basis, yeah? You feel at home, you feel like you've arrived, you feel like you can rest, yeah? You're now assured, not looking for assurance all day, but living from assurance, yeah? Yeah, so <clears throat> I th- I love this. Uh, if you stay, the longer you live sober, I think the more can get revealed. And most of it just uh, just multiplies gratitude and honor and awe, A-W-E, yeah? You're just amazed uh how far out to lunch you could have been and to be and then to be able to retrieve the previous condition through this good orderly directions mind boggling it's just incredible yeah yeah so exactly i'm surrounded here the dog is here my love of life is here friend jeff is here the cat is lurking somewhere we're one big happy fucking family. Yeah. Lovely day. Yeah. And able to enjoy it because I'm not preoccupied with yesterday and tomorrow. All is good in the universe. Yes. Yep. So here we are. We'll be here this week, but next week, Tuesday, we will not be here. Today, you know, the 1031 and then the 431. And Thursday, next week, we will not be here. Wednesday and Saturday, we will be, but not Thursday. Tuesdays and Thursday, just for one week next week. Yeah, because we'll be back east. We're going to be at the, uh, we're going to be at the front lines, rehab treatment situation. Yeah. Tons of characters at the effect of being misguided. Yes. Ooh. What a what a privilege, eh? Privilege I get, I have to go there. So a great privilege, really. All right. Nice, uh, Mike. Thank you as always. Thank you. Love your shares because they're always nice to me. I like that. Eh? How could I not love those shares? Mickey, the matriarch of Madeira. She may be expanding her influence. I don't know. Yeah. Laurie, nice to see you, honey. Dressed in white. 
Axel, Gary C., oh man in Placerville. Nice to see you. Say hello to your lovely wife, Gary, from Emilio and I. I will. Thanks. We got our guy from uh, the Isle of Jura. Yes. <laughs> we still have plans of uh, invading it. Yeah. I'll we'll keep get, my eyes open, get Paul. A, get a dress like sheep. We should get in. We should get pretty far. It needs to be like deer. There's too many of them. <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> Kathleen, nice to see you, honey. Sarah Swati. Also, we have a meeting at 4.30 Pacific time today. So we will be there. Miak, oh, Miak, uh, I don't think she's has, she hasn't returned from the rivering. I see some foreign people there. I can't see. Let's see. Who, who are they? I can't, I can't get them bigger, but I think it's Amelin and Hiram. Wow. Rico, Rico Cruz, a man of his word. Rick Rowe, I hope everything's going well, Rick, there. Joseph, France, John K, Walter, Marilyn from Tallahassee. John. You were coming in. K Paul was coming in loud and clear today. Oh, good. K Paul, yes. It's it's got it's advertising free. Advertising free. That's nice. No commercials. John, Florida. Maral, Maral, California. Michael Stacy, he's he broke out the uh, tank tops. It's going to be hot in Madeira. Miss Volkman, yes. Free from the bondage itself and still have a a a sore big toe. What? Yes. Kurt Zimmerman, nice to see you. Roman Mueller, my main man in Germany. Oh, we got an Isle of Butte. Of Butte. We got, we got an Isle of Jura, and now we got the Isle of Butte. Butte. Wow. You're very popular in the west coast of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've been targeting that area for quite a while. I'm happy to hear that. We've been working the Scottish angle for a while. Hey, do me a favor. Can you please say the word miracle? Who, me or Linton? <laughs> okay. Medical. Linton, go first. I'm not I'm not Scottish, but I'll gladly say it. Miracle. <laughs> oh, see that now that we understand. All right, let's hit us with miracle. A miracle. A miracle. <laughs> yeah, that's Scottish, yeah. Wow. Nice. Thank you, bro. I love that word said with and i love bastard it's a, when the scots say bastard it's a very very potent uh word bastard my friend it's usually friend, preceded by yeah yeah, yeah bastard, bastard. <laughs> give us one give us one there john what you bastard <laughs> yeah another one i can't believe i'm on your thing here and i'm get, the only thing i'm doing is swearing <laughs> go ahead well, you bastard, it's a miracle. There you go. That's good. Thank you. I'm going to have you video. I want you to, I want to play that. I want to have that on my uh, telephone message. Answer the, the phone, you bastard. It's a miracle. Yeah, it could be your that. ringer. It could be your ringer, Paul. Huh? I like that one. All right, Oliver. Nice to see you, Oliver. Barney, Barney may be new, a phone number, Amy, I know Amy, Jess in Ireland, Jess is, Amelia's here, she says hello, Fletch, give me a ring, Fletch, I heard about uh, the passing, Tom M, a little later in the day, not right now though, Tom M, Ben, Robert in Kentucky, Kurt Z, uh, Lucia, if I missed you, I haven't really. Saraswati, Kathleen, Miak, the Hiram, the Amelin. Hey, thank you, everyone. Pleasure. See you soon. Thanks, Hope Paul. Maybe later. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Good to be here. Thanks, Paul. Becky, thanks, thanks, Michael. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone.
Thanks, Mickey. You see. You got it. Yeah, thanks, Mickey. Of course. Why is it the only time when I'm on here he always asks me to swear? <laughs> <laughs> he loves your accent, John. It's it's it is it, it he he is attached. I'm attached to New York accents. I think they're amazing. It just shows you how <laughs> the shoes on See, the opposite foot here, you know. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this, this American accent, the New York accent, it's, uh, I think it's the most genuine American accent. It's the real mix of every kind of accent you could imagine in the New York accent. Yeah. Anyway, I got to go. Leanne, you look very comfortable. Good to see us. Are you still in yes. Spain? Relaxed. Sorry, I'm, I'm quite relaxed at the moment. <laughs> Are you in Spain? Hmm? Are you in Spain? Yes, yes, still still in Spain, yes. <laughs> Do you live in Spain then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For oh, many okay. years. Yes, yes. All right. <clears throat> yeah. And you're Where, still in uh, Germany or you're now in the Isle of Duke? No, I just put my roots up there, Isle of Butte. I still live near Frankfurt at the moment, you know. But I'm going to get some more Scottish people to come in from the islands and get them all to put the name of their islands beside their name. <laughs> just to freak <laughs> <them out. laughs> 